Hi, I'm Crow and Cockatrice, and this episode I'll examine a very obscure creature, the Philidoo. It's so obscure that I barely found any information on its original version. The Philidoo is a wingless lizard or dragon-like creature, which was part of the legends and folklore of the native tribes living in the Ozark Mountains, now part of Arkansas. Beyond this, I could not uncover much, but it also became known as Goro, Goligog, or Moogie by the settlers in the 1800s, becoming a cryptid of sorts. The lore of the Goro is much more accessible, with a very detailed description. It is said to be at least 20 feet long, that is about 6 meters for countries with the proper metrics. It has two boar-like tusks protruding forwards from its jaws, a row or rows of short horns along its back, large webbed feet, and a long tail with a blade on its end. While my interpretation makes it similar to an alligator, this is the actual image shown in an early article discussing the creature. Yeah, it looks terrible. I mean, I don't know how uh, the quote-unquote artist understood the English language or how many boar tusks he's seen in his life, but bloody hell, don't submit your shitty first draft to newspaper people will actually read. Nevertheless, people of the time really ate up the story and belief in its existence was very strong. What was that story, you ask? Well, let me present the four notable mentions of the Goro. The earliest reports date back to the 1880s. People mentioned the Goro as being a species, not an individual creature, that lays soft-shell eggs the size of beer kegs. The mother apparently had a pouch to carry its infants, and from this era, two stories persisted to this day. The first one has a few variations, but a man called E.G. Rhodes went to explore a place called Devil's Hole in Boone County, Arkansas. Some sources say he had people helping him do so, but in every version he found a deep funnel-like opening, which was too dark to see the bottom. He attempted to descend, but fearing that noxious gases were present, or because he heard a vicious hissing noise, something a reptile would make, he decided to ascend. However, to be able to measure the exact depth, him and his men tied a piece of iron to a rope and dropped it into the hole. With a hissing sound, the rope was pulled hard. When they retrieved it, the iron was bent with scratch and bite marks covering it. In one version, they tried again with rocks, but the line was cut each time. The other story circulating at the time involved a hoax. People from Maina, Paul County, claimed to have caught a Goro by feeding it so much dried apples that it could not return to its burrow, and charged people a quarter to see the monster. They gathered an audience in front of a tent, claimed to house the creature. Then, following sounds of a roar, gunshots and the rattling of chains, a man stumbled out of the tent, shouting that the Goro escaped, inciting people to run for their lives. If that would not be enough, they collapsed the tent right after, and the scared crowd had no chance to ask for a refund. While only one case of this is mentioned, we can infer that such ruses were not uncommon. On January the 31st, 1897, an article appeared in the Arkansas Gazette, which discussed another story involving the creature. A little rock businessman called William Miller claimed to have met one, and killed it too. Apparently, the Goro was devouring livestock and pets near Blanco, Searcy County, and he formed a post to hunt the beast down. They tracked it to its lair, which had bones of animals and humans littering the vicinity. They hid nearby in an attempt to ambush it. The Goro emerged from a nearby lake with the earth trembling and a terrifying roar a sound which he claimed earned the beast its name. They shot several volleys into the monster, which ultimately killed it, but not before it tore up several trees and severed a leg from one of the post members. This report has many details on the beast's appearance. In fact, the image I showed earlier was published in the Gazette, based on this description. William also claimed that he sent the bones and skin of the animal to the Smithsonian Institute, 
but the institute claimed that it never arrived. To this, he replied that someone must have taken off with his trophy. Yeah, if I were a skeptic, which I am, I would say he was lying. But you never know, I guess. The last sighting is just a mention, without many details. Van V. Randolph claimed to have encountered a Philidu, he called it by the original name, in 1951 in the Ozark Mountains, and it was still widely believed to exist in his time. Based on the appearance, I would guess that it was a large American alligator. They have a ridged back, a long tail with a pointy end, the females carry their young in their mouth, which might not be a pouch, but still. Their feet are webbed, a few individuals were recorded to reach almost 6 meters in length, and even the soft shell eggs match, barring their size. The only thing we are missing are the tusks. Plus, alligators do not really live at the bottom of deep holes and cannot vent iron with their bite, but then again, no animal can. The most likely explanation of the Philidu and the Goro is the exaggeration of huge alligators encountered in the wild. On the other hand, is it possible that a now extinct species of crocodilians with tusk-like weapons existed before the settlers arrived? Or maybe even during the 1800s in small numbers? While I would say it is unlikely, I cannot definitively say that it is impossible. We currently only know a fraction of extinct animals, and while the Philidu would not have gone extinct that long ago, remains might have gone unnoticed or misidentified, but chances are not high. However, if it did, or better yet, would exist, how would it look like? Well, this one's not that much of a challenge. The tusks are described as boar-like, so a pair of large teeth on the lower jaws would suffice. I doubt they would have a use for them in hunting, alligators are quite successful without them, however, the males could perhaps show off their dominance with them, maybe even by using the tusks to chase others of their territory, being able to cause nasty wounds without biting. We could also add a set of larger flat scales to the end of the tail, which would resemble a blade although I'd say it's more useful in swimming rather than killing, as such a tail weapon would not be effective. There is a reason why scorpions have poison and can hold their tails high above their body. On the topic of their eggs, well, even a 6 meters long alligator would have trouble laying birkex sized ones. They would tear the poor female apart, not to mention that she would potentially have to sort 20 to 50 of them prior to nesting, even a few would squash her organs. Perhaps the eggs could be larger than those of an ordinary alligator, but I would not go much bigger. Moving on to its potential pouch... No, just no. They cannot be marsupials. Plus, I don't think I have to point out the dangers of having the younglings under the belly of an animal predominantly resting on its belly or with its belly under water. Carrying their hatchlings in their mouth, like real alligators, is fine though. There seems to be no issue with where it lives. Well, there would be now. These animals are huge, always said to be 6 meters in length, which would mean they are larger than the largest American alligator ever recorded by about a fifth of a meter. This means they'd need quite a large amount of food to be able to upkeep a large enough population for the species not to suffer from inbreeding. While that would have been quite achievable back in the day, in our modern times even the smaller alligators have been pushed back into a fraction of their original habitat. Such a large animal would most likely go extinct or be on the brink if they lost so much potential hunting grounds, or at the very least they would have reduced in size. Additionally, reports seem to indicate that they are solitary, maybe highly territorial, which would further reduce their chances. Lastly, would they change the world if they existed? Well, pre-settlers, not by much, just another species of alligators to fill some habitats where the abundance of prey could allow such large animals to thrive. In the 1800s, 
there could have been actual shows featuring Goros, similar to how we pester their cousins nowadays. Today, if they would have survived, maybe we could farm them like regular alligators. But managing 6 meters long fililoos with gorging tusks is not really a job many sane people would take. A documentary called Goro King has a nice ring to it though. And that is all I have for the Filidu, just a huge bestial alligator that may or may not have existed. Well, I'm fairly sure it didn't. Thank you for watching this long, I hope you've enjoyed this dissection. If you did, why not give the video a like? If you want to see another mythical monster to be put on the autopsy table, leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!